Welding, the process of joining metals by heating them to their melting points to bond them. Welding can produce toxic fumes, gases, and other contaminants. Metal fumes, because of their small size, can penetrate deep into the lungs, allowing the toxins to enter the bloodstream. The health effects of metal fumes include metal fume fever, nervous system and reproductive effects, brain damage, and respiratory disease, including lung cancer. Because of the hazards of metal fumes, OSHA requires employers to limit exposures to them using engineering controls, such as ventilation. To reduce exposure to welding fumes, many employers rely only on natural ventilation. Others provide general ventilation, such as fans, but this is not likely to reduce exposure sufficiently in enclosed spaces. The recommended method of controlling metal fumes is at the source of emission, using local exhaust ventilation. Local exhaust ventilation removes metal fumes at the point of generation and doesn't allow the concentration to build up in either the worker's breathing zone or the work area. The parts of a typical local exhaust ventilation or LEV unit are the hood, the duct, and the fan. Some local exhaust units also have filters for trapping fumes. How effective are these local exhaust ventilation units or LEVs in reducing exposure to welding fumes? To find out how well local exhaust ventilation units work, an iron worker at the Philadelphia Tramrail Company agreed to wear this exposure monitoring equipment while welding with and without the use of LEVs. This demonstration was carried out by the Engineering and Work Practices Controls Work Group, a joint initiative of the Center to Protect Workers' Rights and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. The group's mission is to identify and evaluate engineering and work practice controls in the construction industry. Published research by CPWR has shown that mechanical and local exhaust ventilation reduce worker exposure to welding fumes. For this demonstration, these two portable LEVs were evaluated. The goal was to demonstrate any difference in exposure to welding fumes with and without the LEV. The welder used gas metal arc welding, also known as MIG welding. The monitoring probe in the welder's breathing zone measured the amount of fume the welder is exposed to while he welds. These exposures are represented visually on the scale at left and numerically on the scale at top. The measurements are in milligrams per cubic meter. As the exposure goes up, the bar and the number go up. The yellow marker on the visual scale at left represents OSHA's General Industry Permissible Exposure Limit, or PEL, for welding fume, 5 milligrams per cubic meter. NIOSH recommends a worker's exposure to welding fume be reduced to the lowest feasible level. Now let's see what real-time monitoring shows about exposure to welding fumes with and without local exhaust ventilation. First. Welding without an LEV. Watch the scale. Notice how quickly exposures rise and how they remain above the OSHA PEL while work is performed. Now look at welding with the small, well-positioned LEV. Notice that the metal fume measurement is lower compared with the level reached by welding without LEVs. The level does not exceed the OSHA PEL. If you look closely, you can see the metal fume being drawn into the hood of the LEV. Let's look again at welding without the LEV. Clearly, levels are significantly higher when the LEV is not used. Now look at welding with the large LEV. Just watch the scale. Notice how low the measurement is, barely showing on the exposure scale, compared with the level reached by welding without the LEV. 
the levels are significantly reduced, never exceeding or approaching the OSHA PEL. In all cases, effective use of local exhaust ventilation also requires the worker to keep the hood close to the work. What did the NIOSH CPWR demonstration show? We've shown that the portable local exhaust ventilation is effective in reducing welding fume exposures in an indoor setting. Second, a welder can easily move, set up, and operate these portable LEV units. And welders perceive them as effective in reducing they exposures. They both, uh, they both well, suck the, the gas and the fumes uh, real good. It, it worked, they both work fine as far as the fumes and gas. Effectiveness, worker acceptance, and ease of use, combined with relatively low cost, should make these LEVs feasible for use in construction. A word of caution. This demonstration is not intended as guidance for ventilating confined spaces. Hot work in poorly ventilated confined spaces can be deadly. Several agencies and organizations have published regulations or recommendations for ventilating confined spaces. You have seen that portable LEVs can reduce exposure to welding fumes. Reducing exposure can decrease occupational illness. For example, the California Workers' Compensation Appeals Board recently awarded $83,000 in compensation and medical costs to a welder whose Parkinson's disease was found to be caused by welding with manganese. In addition to local exhaust ventilation, the workplace should have good housekeeping and hygiene facilities. Personal protective equipment, including respiratory protection, may also be necessary to supplement ventilation. The use of local exhaust ventilation and good work practices will mean better health, greater lifelong productivity, lower worker compensation costs, and lower health care and social security disability costs. If you would like more information, just contact the Center to Protect Workers' Rights 